can I please get some guidance? My dad was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. My uncle Bob just passed away today. I am so sad. I need some advice, please. So the first message that would come through for you is that this is a season that needs to be observed. A grief observed. Who wrote that? C.S. Lewis? I don't even know if that's the title, but we need to process grief. We can't run from grief. We must observe it. And indeed, we must be in it. We have to feel it in order to go through it. So this is a season that you're in that must be observed and must be processed in order for you to receive from it what you need to know as a lesson. And of course, there's the understanding that everything ends. Everything does. Everything ends. And sometimes it seems to us as premature. And other times, it seems like it's right on time. But everything must end. Do know that none of us checks out. None of us clocks out at a time other than that which was ordained before we even got here. Before we incarnated into this life, we knew our death date. We knew our birth date. We knew our death date. All of these have correspondences, by the way, numerologically speaking and astrologically speaking. But they have correspondences. And we knew and we chose those dates for ourselves. And so sometimes we say, why? She died so young or so tragically. But in terms of the grand scheme, they died right on time. They left exactly when they preordained for themselves that they would go. But of course, they leave us behind. And the hard part of being left behind are all the things we could have done differently. And all the things, all the time we wasted, right? Before my mother died, my mother got diagnosed with terminal cancer in May of 2012. And she didn't tell me right away. Because I had just met Jeremy a few months earlier and I was starting a new life with him. And she didn't want to bring me down. And then she got the final news that she thought she could do chemo. She thought there were things she could do. But then she found out in June of 2012, there was nothing that they could do. And so she called me. And during this time, May, June, July, she called me. But I didn't know she was dying. And I was newly in love. And I didn't pick up her calls a lot of the time. So she'd leave messages. And she'd call and, you know, I, I, I called her back and I would always make, she lived in Colorado by then and I would always make, you know, try to make appointments like, hey mom, can we meet up? Or, hey mom, do you want to come over, spend the weekend? And she wanted to do that less and less. She kind of just wanted to hang out at her house. And then finally she told me that she was not feeling well and needed to go to the ER. So Jeremy and I went and got her. We took her to the ER. They did scans and stuff. And then the doctor pulled me aside and said, your mom is filled with cancer, filled with cancer. And he showed us. And I was like, he, she said, he said, you, she has two weeks. And I was shocked. My mom was 67 years old. And he said, do you want to tell her or do you want me to tell her? And I said, I'll tell her. And that was probably the hardest thing I ever had to do in my whole life was sit there and tell my mom. I said, Mom, they showed me your scans. It's bad. And she said, okay, okay. How bad? How long do I have? Like, so light about it. And I said, you have two weeks left. And she was so grateful. She's like, oh, my God, that's awesome. Two weeks. My brother can get here. I can see your brother. Everything will be great. That's, that's a lot of time. And she was so positive about it. But... I spent a lot of time, I still do, thinking about all those missed phone calls. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what if I picked it up? About three years ago, so what is this, 2014, two years after she passed, two or three years after she passed, I was switching my phones around, and I, was, I think I was getting rid of my landline. And so I picked it up, and I had like 70 voicemails on it, because I hate phones and voicemail in particular. And so I like, had to go through the voicemails to see what was there. And there was my mother on my voicemail over and over and over again. And she was never rude about it. She was like, hey, it's me. I know you're busy. Just wanted you to know that I love you more than anything in the world. And I always will. Click. She'd call back. She'd leave other messages because she knew she was dying. I didn't know. Who those messages they came at the right time in my life, but 
The pain is in the people left behind. And that's just, that's just the season. That's what it is. And it doesn't ever go away. I have friends here in the lab who lost their mom decades ago. They're still, we still cry about it together. It's just something that never goes away. That's your dad. That's your uncle. And that's okay. That's part of this human experience. We came to feel it all. Grief is one of those things. So allow yourself to go through the process of that and to be in it fully. And you'll release much of the pain part of it. There'll always be the poignancy, though. Do you know what I mean? There'll always be that. I talk to you now about it, and it's so poignant to me. I didn't do anything wrong. I was newly in love. I was trying to build a life, and I let it get away from me. My mom, I've, I've been upset about it, and, and my mom talks to me, okay? She's one of those guides that I have. And she says, oh, will you just shut up? I hear her doing that all the time. Oh, please, not this again. Like, I, I beat myself up about it for a long period of time. My mom doesn't want to hear it anymore, and I don't need to be in that space anymore. The pain is gone, but the poignancy never leaves us. It's not supposed to. It's, it, it informs the life that we're living. So that's the message that I have for you, Franny. Many blessings to you. Much love. I think a lot of us relate to what you're going through right now. Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go to crystallandcompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.